the negative utopia described in my story, man has been subordinated to his own inventions. Science, technology, social organization, these things have ceased to serve man. They have become his master. Hello, my name is Jonathan Woods. I am director of uh, Access Monday for the Paradigm Gray Project. Hi, my name is Ted Crowder. I'm one of the directors and I'm also the writer on the project of Access Mundi, which is part of the Paradigm Gray. My name is Cassandra Bell and I am one of the directors of Paradigm Gray. And my particular production is called Headshot. Hi, my name is Dave Johnson with SEI Studios. I'm one of the producer directors on Paradigm Gray. My particular project is called Bloodlines. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Adams. Uh, Impact Studio, and I started this crazy project called Paradigm Gray. Invited a bunch of friends. I heard about the Paradigm Gray project. Um, um, Darren and I was working on another project, and so he would talk about the Paradigm Gray project. So I would literally follow him on set, saying, am I not good enough to be a part of the Paradigm Gray? Why can't I be a part of it? Chris Adams is not gonna call me. He never calls me for anything. I heard that a great, good friend, uh, Chris Adams, I had a group uh, with like-minded people that were planning to put movies together and, and kind of fulfill dreams, really. And uh, we all had dreams that we wanted fulfilled and I uh, thought that I might participate, me and my business partner, Jonathan Woods. Access Monday is a kind of a rites of passage story about a young man uh, moving into um, adulthood, discovering who he is. And actually, um, in this discovery, uh, he finds out that there is a lot more to himself than he ever possibly could have imagined. The piece is about um, a young woman who was given up at birth for adoption and having the opportunity to meet her birth mother. And I'll leave it there. Um, I, I'm fascinated in the horror genre, so that gives you an idea that this is, you know, not going to have a Cinderella ending. <laughs> All of the filmmakers had their various strengths and weaknesses, and we were like, okay, how can we use that as a positive? So I thought an anthology. I got to think about Twilight Zone and, and Black Mirror specifically, um, which I was a huge fan of. and. I was pulling teeth trying to get people to watch that and Luther. You know, they're like, who are these British black people, you know? Um, and then, you know, once they saw Black Mirror, they're like, oh, light bulb, light bulb went off in their head. You know, um, it's such a well-produced show, well-written, well-directed, just everything about it. I have zero complaints about, about Black Mirror. So I was like, this is our bar. And so we came up with the idea of Paradigm Gray. And it would be an anthology film and everyone would be responsible for their story. We would use our pool of resources. If, if I had something that you needed, you had it. And it just worked. There are so many talented filmmakers, so many talented artists, so many talented uh, actors and, and screenwriters that I've had the opportunity to touch here in Chicago that I've always wanted. You know, I, I've always had this theory. I created this theory, made up my own theory. And the theory is called the bakery theory, okay? And it's this idea that too many of us fight for our side, slice of the pie. You know, I, I'm not gonna give up my resources, I'm not gonna give up my, my financiers, I'm not gonna give up, you know, because I gotta hold on so tight to it. And I've always wondered, what if I took my slice and put it with someone else's slice? You know, if you collect enough of those slices, you have a whole pie. You get enough pies together and you got a bakery, you know? And so when Chris called me and told me what it is he was trying to do with this project, I was like, oh man, this is exactly what I've always wanted. I personally was influenced a little bit by um, Mother of George. Um, not a lot of people, have, have, not a lot of traditional film geeks may have seen this film. Um, it's done by an African director uh, a few years back and I believe Ava DuVernay's company uh, uh, put it out and everything. And I unfortunately can't remember the director's name right now, but he was first uh, a fashion photographer. But his work was so interesting because uh, what, what people were wearing, how they carry themselves, their body language, and other kinds of things also tell a story. So that's what we were doing. 
So as the only female director, I believe that, you know, it is my belief that I bring a certain femininity to the project. And um, I am such a, um, what do I say? I am, I consider myself to be an urban writer. And I bring, I think I bring a lot of um, urbanness um, to the Paradigm Gray project, as well as um, my own sense of uniqueness. My background is definitely theater. It is what I'm known for. It's where I won the majority of my awards. But um, one of the things that I got an opportunity to do as a playwright was a lot of times people that were in film would come to my productions and they would see my sets. And so they would, you know, always ask, who's your set designer? You know, who's your production designer? Who's your art person? And I would go, oh, I'm the art person and I'm the director and I'm the writer and I'm the wardrobe. And they're like, oh, did you ever think about, you know, you have great eye, you ever think about doing this for film? So I was like, no, but I'm open and I'm willing. And so that's what I started doing. I started working in art on films and um, being around that atmosphere of films and working with my cinematographers, I kind of, kind of shadowed them. So I started kind of following the camera and then I also started watching the director. Paradigm Gray is a perfect storm. It's, uh, it's an opportunity for us as black people to, sh to show in a visual way all the facets we have. And you know, we've never been a simple story. Uh, you know, for years we were seen as monolithic. You know, you see one black person, then you know the next black person that you see. Well, that's absolutely the opposite. We know that as black people, we're not monolithic. So the idea of putting these stories together should touch some aspect of everyone. And I think that uh, this is something that has, should have been, should have happened many years ago. But this is something that no one, it's, it can't happen until we do it. So this is an opportunity for people to see themselves, and to see their, I guess, eccentricities, uh, and also to be able to imagine themselves too in some different, in a different area or a different environment because sometimes our lives are mundane, sometimes we're trapped in a nine to five job and we're all dreamers. So this is an escape for us. But escapes also sometime, you know, mental escapes are also sometimes facilitate real escape. When you start imagining yourself as a different type of a person, then you have uh, a different set of, of things that satisfy you. So you start changing. So sometimes movies can change the world. What I would like to do, I would like to keep doing more stories for Paradigm Grey. I really like this format, but also spinning off uh, Paradigm Grey as a brand, so we could do feature films that are in the vein of Paradigm Grey without the host and, you know, it's like feature length films, and they would be a, parad a Paradigm Grey film. Um, and I just want to keep changing the dynamic of what what has been expected of African American filmmakers. Um, we seem to be stuck in these modes and, you know, no no diss to the directors that are doing these genres, you know, the, the hood stories, the dramas, the hood dramas, the, the romantic comedies, the comedies, the buddy movies, you know, but it seems to me like we're just stuck in Menace to Society Part 8, Soul Food Part 10, Medea, you know, and there's so much more that we have to offer um, as filmmakers and storytellers. Um, me being a father also, I want to create uh, heroes and uh, for, for that look like my son, that look like me, so um, they don't have to go and, and really dig and hunt. It's like, whoa, here's a cool character. He hasn't been demasculated, he's heroic, he's, uh, he or she uh, is powerful of their own volition you know, not being empowered by someone else, because a lot of times they, they like to put what I call disablers in stories. Uh, when, when they try to make us heroes, it's always someone on the sideline who usually is not of our color that empowers them versus we empowering ourselves. Um, and then also I got sick of, uh, you know, you see a black guy in a sci-fi or horror, you know they're not gonna last through the whole movie. Like I was really upset when uh, the trailer for um, Life with Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds, the black guy dies in the trailer. I was like, did they really 
just kill the black guy in the trailer? We can't even, I was like, wow, that blew me away. Right now, we, we are the essence of hip hop. And by that, I mean, we are working with two turntables and a microphone, you know? <laughs> we are using the resources that we have available and our creativity to tell stories, you know, to the highest degree that we can possibly tell it. However, what I see Paradigm Gray doing is becoming a resource to other artists. Becoming that place that people turn to and go, hey, we want to roll with them. They're, they're doing something and they're doing something totally different. I think the biggest problem, and I was just telling uh, Cassandra Bell earlier when, when we were talking, is that the way Hollywood works, they hate creativity. I mean, they hate it with a passion. They're, they're terrified of it. So what they do is they go, okay, well this movie made them bajillion dollars. So we're gonna make 30 movies exactly like that. And if you come through the door and say, hey, well, I've got this creative idea for this, that, and th they don't wanna hear that. You know, go give me what that person did, you know? And Paradigm, where I see that moving forward is becoming that resource center, that creative place that can green light your creative projects, allow you to go ahead and explore, you know, your ideas from your particular voice. With, with Bloodlines, because the story was about um, a mother and daughter, I felt like it was very important for me to go get an African-American female to help me write it. So I reached out to Carla Stilwell, who is the artistic director over at Impact. Uh, it's a theater group here in Chicago. And I said, hey, you know, I've got this story. I already knew who I wanted to cast. I wanted to work the story around Coco Alyssis, who is a brilliant actress. And I said, but it's the story between a mother and daughter. Now, I can handle the structure of the story. I know where I want it to go and what it's gonna be about, but because I'm trying to tell it from a very simplistic standpoint, and it's going to be very dialogue heavy and conversation between this mother and daughter, I'm not gonna dare take that responsibility of trying to write that for two black women. So I call Carl in. <laughs> and I think moving forward, that's what's going to be important for Paradigm Gray is not that we're telling black stories, but we're telling black centric stories. We're telling it from a black standpoint, a black point of view. And if the characters are going to be black, then to me it's very important that your writers are black. I want to see Paradigm Gray grow. I want to, I want to bring other filmmakers in. Uh, I want to build a studio. Um, so we have a place to, uh, to, to centralize um, all of this creativity, access to the tools, and just put out this product uh, in a cost-effective manner. Uh, maybe we, you know, I see us with technology spawn sponsors. Um, so we could just put out all these really cool stories, and you know, not just for the for the big screen, but for the small screen. Uh, we're we're doing VR experiments, uh, video games, comic books. We've got a lot of really creative people on board, and you know, this is just the first. This is the snowball we're rolling down the hill, and as it grows, it gets bigger and bigger, and it's eventually just going to be this unstoppable force.